I'm all bad. You and me both, Dirk. You and me both. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, signing day number two. Uh, we're able to finish off our class today. Uh, still waiting on a couple that we expect that we can't uh, talk about till we actually physically get them in our hands. But uh, for all intent and purposes, we're done recruiting for this cycle. Um, feel real good about the class, obviously. To repeat myself, some of the things I said back in December, uh, a great uh, crop of in-state athletes this year. Signed uh, five of the top six uh, athletes in the state. And when you combine that with five return missionaries from in-state, 10 of the 25 allocated uh, initial scholarships will be going to Utah players. So, so we're excited about that, keeping those guys home for the most part. You're never going to keep every one of them home. It just, it's not uh, realistic. But we feel we did a, a really good job this year in uh, keeping a lot of talent within the state. Uh, second up was Texas with five, and then uh, Hawaii and California with three each, and then one from New Mexico, uh, Alabama, Arizona, and uh, Oregon. So that rounded out the class. Um, freshman heavy. We only took uh, one junior college player and uh, one uh, JC transfer, or not JC transfer, portal transfer. And so uh, we're building up the freshman numbers. We have 35, I believe it is, uh, freshmen on scholarship for this coming fall, which is the most by far that uh, uh, since I've been here at Utah in the 25 years. And so, so we're uh, a lot of young talent in the program. Uh, then we got another. Uh, 16 or 17 sophomores, so you know, 50, near 53, 54 of the of the uh, scholarships. By the time it was all said and done, of the uh, 85 will be freshmen, sophomores. So a lot of new faces you're going to see this year. Uh, lost a lot of good players. Uh, nine uh, going to the combine, which is uh, our highest number ever, and uh, eight of those on defense. So uh, you know, it's not not hard to find, uh, figure out why we were. Uh, formidable on defense this year and had statistically the best defense we've ever had here at the University of Utah. So uh, it's going to be a big challenge to replace those guys. But like I said, this young talent is uh, going to get opportunities. Um, we were defensive heavy in this class, uh, 16 defenders, nine offensive players. Uh, and again, the reason being is the departure. We had far more uh, graduating players uh, on defense than we did on offense. And uh, offense has got very few new faces, although key guys, you know, the quarterback, the tailback, um, uh, left tackle. So key spots, but not, not quad, uh, quantity, you know, not, not a lot of departure. But anyway, we're, uh, you know, we're ready to gear up and get going on spring ball, which starts May, uh, excuse me, March 2nd. And uh, we'll go three days that week. We'll take a week off for spring break come back and get back after it and we finish on April 11th with what we believe is going to be the spring game. If our numbers get a little bit uh, low then it may be a modified version of a spring game but but uh, that's the plan going forward. So questions? <coughs> Kyle, with this class specifically did you guys want to sign a quarterback considering what the room looked like kind of top heavy with, with Drew and Jake being seniors and having Cam the only underclassman in the group? Uh, yeah, and, and the quarterback position is unique, uh, and it, it has become more unique in the last three years with the advent of the portal. And a lot of teams just pick up their quarterback for that year out of the portal, and it's a one-and-done situation. And so, yes, we wanted to uh, to recruit a quarterback and try to balance it out. We've got four quarterbacks uh, that will be in the room, uh, Cam and Jake and Drew Lisk and uh, Cooper uh, Justice. And so we feel we're in a good spot. Now next year we'll have to – retool the room again and it, that quarterback room turns over quite a bit now and I don't think it's unique to us I think it's pretty common throughout the country that uh, with the portal and the quarterback probably being the most uh, volatile position not volatile but uh, position that uh, has the most movement that uh, that's just how it is now what positions on both sides of the ball are the easiest for freshmen to come in and potentially start or see significant playing time uh, that's a good question. It's, it's a relative question. Uh, on defense, uh, you know, the learning curve is the least steep up front on the D line and outside at corner. Uh, it's quite complex, and at linebacker and safety it takes a little more uh, time to learn things in that respect. Um, but physically, you know, to, to get inside and on the interior line and 
bang in there as a freshman is, is not easy to do unless you're physically ready for that. So, And then offensively, I would say the perimeter is probably the, the fastest place you can plug in, you know, the wide receiver spot. You already have a few of the guys from the 2020 class here on campus. What have you seen from them in their first couple of weeks uh, of work, and, and what do you expect from them moving forward? Yeah, we've seen great things. I mean, we're, we're excited about it. And those guys that you mentioned, uh, we got obviously Jake Bentley here, Ben Renfro's here, uh, the return missionaries, Hunter Lothan Lille, Taniela Pututau, Tennessee Pututau, and Aliki Vimahi, and then Clark Phillips, our talented corner, is here. We also anticipate getting Kane Savage uh, before too much longer. We're, we're trying to get clearance to the NC2A to get him for spring ball as well. And uh, a lot of good stuff. You know, the, you know, the, the big guys are, are all athletic and move really well. And, and Clark Phillips is quick as a cat. And, and Ben Renfro is, uh, looks like he's going to make that transition from right, wide receiver to safety. And then Jake Bentley is a proven commodity at QB. Kyle, just generally speaking, can you, can you speak to how far your recruiting efforts have come here in the last four or five years? It seems like you guys are in line to have your most successful cycle here ever since you joined the Pac-12. I don't think there's any question about that. Our nest, our net has been cast uh, fairly wide. You know, we got uh, guys from uh, you know a lot of different parts of the country. But more than anything else, is we're able to stand toe to toe and win some of these battles against high-profile schools. I mean, you look at our recruits and their offer lists of who they had offers by. And, uh, you know, we, we're beating some really good schools and schools that we could not even have been in the conversation with, uh, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. Can you just speak a little bit more to what Cooper was, like, what intrigued you guys about, about Cooper? He has a pretty unique story, and he was a pretty under-recruited kid, <clears throat> but he's a big body, left, left-handed left quarterback. Yeah. What was it about his game that you feel like suits this program? Just the upside. He's so, you, you know, you said he's, He's raw. That's probably the best way to describe Cooper. He's six foot six plus, probably six six and a half, two hundred and forty pounds, and was injured in high school his sophomore junior year, and and uh, really had limited experience his senior year. It was really his only year of extensive playing time. Uh, tremendous baseball player as well. He'll probably get drafted, uh, but he wants to be a football guy. Unless he gets drafted really high, that uh, shouldn't be a factor. But but what Andy really liked is his upside. I mean, he's uh, you know he looks a lot like Justin Herbert. Uh, as far as his stature, I mean, you, know, you can't compare him to Justin Herbert for what he's doing at quarterback yet. But as far as how he looks, he looks just like that, although he's a lefty. But uh, we just think that he's a, a, an intriguing guy and also big enough and thick enough to, you know, if it for some reason didn't work out at quarterback, you know, he's a guy that could play probably two or three other spots. But he's a quarterback first and foremost, make no mistake about it. <clears throat> How much did continuity in the rec in the coaching staff with not having any turnover help with recruiting? Helps a bunch, and that's uh, that's something that I should have mentioned. Uh, you know, right now the entire staff is intact. There's still time for movement. Most of the movement has occurred, but it's not so late in the game that uh, you, know, you saw what happened at Michigan State, you know, today or yesterday. And so, so um, ideally, everyone stays on board. There's no guarantee of that, but I'd say the odds are in our favor at this uh, you know this stage of the game. And, and the continuity of that helped with recruiting. You know, we didn't have to, in midstream, hand off recruits from one coach to another. And uh, a guy that was, you know, really liked his position coach, uh, a recruit, and had to change. You know, when you change coaches, that ob you know, oftentimes steers that kid in another direction. Will you be able to add a potential transfer this summer? Do you have the space to do that? I know you mentioned you're done in this recruiting mm -hmm. cycle, but uh, will that prohibit you from? From adding a transfer potential. Not necessarily. Uh, there's there, there's two limits you're up against. Uh, well, three limits now with the national letter. You can only sign X amount of national letters. But uh, the scholarships, you're up against the 25 initial count year to year and the 85 overall. So we will have room in the 85. And, uh, you know, if you if a kid decides to join you and, and you don't recruit him, you can count him towards the next year. And so that would be the circumstance that we might be able to add another player or two. I know you can't talk specifics, but off topic, just how disappointed were you in the uh, Terrell Perriman situation here? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I've, I've made the statement on that. And uh, due to, you know, the nature of the investigation and what's going on, I'm precluded from saying anything or comment in any way, shape, or form. And, and uh, that's kind of where that's at. Kyle, two questions. Have you had any changes of positions with guys already in the program? And, and two, how many preferred walk-ons do you guys expect to 
to join the, the program. Okay, good question. Uh, you know, Jason Shelley moved to safety and will stay there. So that's a change that happened at the end of last season. Um, I'm trying to think here. I don't think there's, as of right now, nobody that finished the season at their, their spot has been moved to another spot. Now, that could change in spring. You know, a spring ball goes, gets underway and starts, uh, you know, starts to progress that, you know, if we see a deficiency somewhere or we see a guy that, that looks like, hey, this guy may be a great fit somewhere else, that could happen. But at this moment in time, no changes. Who's going to take the first snap at quarterback in spring ball? Good question. We'll find out. I don't. I couldn't tell you right now. I know that uh, Cam and and uh, Drew. It'll be Cam, Drew, or Jake. How about that? One of those three. Well, they aren't down to those three. So, but uh, don't have an answer right now. <laughs> Kyle, was it expected that Devonta Henry Cole was going to move on from the program? And if so, were you surprised at how quickly kind of his Entering the portal and, and committing to BYU took place. You know, I, I knew Devontae. We knew Devontae uh, was uh, a little disappointed with his production and his amount of playing time and carries. And, and uh, you know, when you're behind Zach Moss, that's going to happen. I mean, there's three or four backs that probably felt that way. But, but uh, Devontae wanted to get into a situation where he could uh, get more opportunity and uh, have a better opportunity to be the, the, the number one back. And uh, you know he would have had to earn that here, and and uh, couldn't guarantee him anything, and so he did what he thought was best for him. And t did it surprise me? No, it did not surprise me. And uh, you know he just thought that was his best best uh, course of action. Okay. All right. I've already worked out. I got all day. If you want to keep going, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone want a water? Free water. Worth like two bucks. There you go. Or less impermissible. Good thing I'm not a recruitable athlete. Even if I were, I'm not.